It's always a party at Patchworks. Let's get this party started. Woot, woot. Hi, everyone. This is Julie from Patchworks, and I am so excited that you're joining us for another Must Sew TV here tonight at Patchworks. So happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you out there. I hope that you're either enjoying some, I don't know, some corned beef or a pint or maybe some thin mints or sewing on green fabric or however you might celebrate. So we have so many exciting things planned for you tonight. We're gonna to be revisiting one of my favorite 12 pack quilts that is behind me. We have a lot of great fabrics to share with you. And then what we're going to do is that we are going to talk a little bit about how we do our machine binding here at Patchworks. I know I've had a conversation with so many of you and it seems like we've just been talking about it more and more lately. And I thought, you know, let's take some time to go through some tips and tricks so that you can have some better success with your binding. How does that sound? All right, so why don't we get started? And we have Frank at the camera and Tammy's at the keyboard. She's also helping gathering some stuff for me as we go through our presentation. So let's take a peek at some of the great fabrics that we have to share with you. So Frank, let's look overhead. All right, so we have some fabrics here to share with you. And let me push these down a little bit. Do I have my directions right? Ah, oh, maybe a little bit this way, a little bit too far. All right, so we have some really amazing fabrics here. So first up at the bottom, we have this Camellia, and Camellia is by Melody Miller for Ruby Star Society. And I love here these teacups and spoons. We have some new sparks here, and then we have this really cool dot that has some metallic in there as well. So we'll take a peek a little bit later at the full line, but this is really pretty. Then we have a Minnick and Simpson selection here. So this is, the new fabric line is Newport, but we did put in to get the full range of colors to match the color, uh, the quilt that we have behind us. So we paired it with some favorites of Minnick and Simpson. And what I love here is that with each new collection that we add, we are just, um, it all goes together, which is just so lovely and beautiful. And then we have the Fresh as a Daisy, which is the latest from Create Joy Project. So we have here the Fat Eighth Bundle, or you can also get it in the Fat Quarter Bundle. And if you're watching it from afar, and you need to have some of these, well, you know we can hook you up, right? So, that's what these look like. But wait, there's more. So let's take a peek at what else we have. So the next three, so we don't worry, we only are giving you six options this time. So we have here we have Rainbow Garden. Look at this. Isn't this amazing? This little world here. So this is a new line by Abby Hall and we had actually ordered this when we only were doing the 8 pack. So we added four amazing friends here this one, this one, this one, and this one to the collection to go with it to be beautiful. So we have the strawberries, which are super awesome, some great star blenders, and then these really awesome little worlds. And you know, that can be great, and you can use it for Earth Day, that's coming up. This next one is The Sea and Me from Stacy Eats Shoe. And Stacy always makes really amazing fabrics, and this one does not uh, does not miss on that. It's some really super cute mermaids, and then we have some sea creature life. We'll take a peek at some of the more details of the fabric a little bit later. And then our color builder is a gorgeous green. And of course, you know, 
Uh, you might think that we are green for St. Patrick's Day, but this is actually our Color Builders palette as it is. The selection of the palette of thread that we have for our Orifil Club, which is next week. And again, we have each of these offerings available in the Fat Eighth or the Fat Quarter stack here. So our club members that are subscribed have chosen to receive one of these cuts, but if you are wanting to just get one of these packs, the uh, 12 Fat A's are $24.99, and the Fat Quarters are $44.99, and you would be able to get, if you bought in for just this month, you would get the little patterns that we're gonna be sharing with you as well. So let's take a peek at one of the fabric lines in a little bit more detail. So we're going to peek at uh, the fabric that we use or that was inspired by this gorgeous quilt behind us. So this one, truth be told, isn't a new, new, new quilt. And it's from my very favorite quilt book, which is our 12 pack quilts here, which is available in store and online. Love it. There are 12 different uh, patterns in here that work with 12 fat quarters. Now, this particular pattern is also well suited to work with um, fat eighths as well. So that is really cool that it works along with that. So with the Newport, I just have to show you all these yummy fabrics here. So Frank, let's take a peek and look at the fabrics here. We're just going to share everything in the line here. And I love this one. So it is a repeat of a print that we've had. You know, it's everything old is new again, right? And so we have some new favorites with some old favorites. And this print there is just gorgeous. We have it available in several different colorways. You could also just pull out blues and tans. I'm a little bit far over. All right, thanks so much, Tammy, for letting me know that you couldn't see. So these are the fabrics that we got in from the collection. And you can see that it is more of the red, white with a hint of blue in there. If we look at the official pre-cuts from the line, we did get in the official Fat Quarter Bundle, and there is a little bit of that beige in there. And so the beige isn't a new color with Minikin Simpson. This blends really, really well with the tan that would be in some of their other lines. It also works tremendously well with that Bunny Hill Crystal Lane fabric that is in stock. So, you know, Moda goes with Moda. We have the Jelly Rolls and the charm packs, as well as the layer cakes. This rounds out and just enhances the collection of Minikin Simpson in our Americana section that we already have. So we are going to show you some of the tips and tricks of making the quilt behind me and then I'm going to show you another version that we did that you can make with your Fat Eighth pack and a little bit of extra fabric. I'm just going to hand this off to Tammy here so I don't get drowned in fabric because you know we have so much to show you. Oh I just love it how all this fabric has just been coming in because it's so exciting seeing the store just continuing to refresh with all sorts of great inspiration and color and it's just so awesome. So, this particular quilt is called Picnic, made with 12 fat quarters. And for Picnic, I probably should have had the page already set for us to look at. It is on page 39. So this is a four purchase book. You can see in the 
in the book here. It has a few different colors in there. And you need to add to your 12 fat quarters a uh, yard and an eighth of white, a uh, yard and an eighth of outer border, which you can see on the, I don't know that you can see it per se right there. I'm just going to show you, I have an up close of the quilt here, if we can see it a little bit better. So that is the quilt in its full glory there that you can make with 12 fat quarters. The whole quilt measures 78 inch square and you have an 11 inch block that you're working with. We also have an inner border, a binding, and then you need uh, the little bit of fabric for though that emerging circle that comes out that blue it's not a circle it's a square <laughs> it's a square it's like i failed geometry here okay so you can see here how this accent fabric the accent is the same as our inner border okay so this fabric right here is also used here and the thing that's really cool about it is that when you're making the block and i'm i'm letting you in on the secret so when I made the block, I didn't realize that you would see a square in between. I don't know how I missed it, but if you're like me, sometimes you're looking at a pattern and you don't see that alternating pattern that emerges. And so anyhow, I, the first time I made this pattern, I was super excited when I saw the square that appeared, kind of like a card trick if you're familiar with that pattern. All right, so you are able to get three blocks from every fat quarter. So that means that a fat eighth pack would easily yield you a block of each one. So then you could make 12 squares easily, okay? So 12 squares would be four, eight, 12, okay? So you could make what uh, we can call a bed runner if you are looking to have a long skinny quilt to go at the bottom of your bed that maybe goes on top of a comforter or something. So those had been in fashion for a while and they also are really nice if you like the look of a like a fresh white duvet and so you just want a little bit of a accent of a color on the bottom of your bed. Okay so let's take a peek at how this goes together. So I can't give you all of the details because, well, this is a four purchase pattern, but I wanna show you the layout of how this goes together, okay? So let's take a peek here. All right, Frank, let's look overhead. So for each block, oh, I need to get a new mat here for what I use you, what I show you. So. I'm showing you a hint of what this block might look like in Fresh as a Daisy. Okay. Oh, I'm missing a piece. That's all right. Okay, so we have for each block from your fat quarter or fat eighth, you need a big rectangle and three skinny rectangles. You're going to be using an accent fabric. The accent fabric is not from your fabric bundle. And then you need your background, okay? You're going to get started by pairing up your, your squares here. Okay, so you'll sew them there, doo -doo -doo, and then attach that to the bottom there. So then it will look like this. After this is together, you are going to attach that on the side. Doo -doo -doo. And then, super slick, you are going to put on this and that. So then it looks like this. All you have left is to attach your side piece and then your block is complete. 
So all of your blocks are made in exactly the same fashion. And then what you do is that you rotate them 90 degrees in order to make the larger block. So Frank, let's take a peek behind us. And we are going to see, let's just pretend this is the same fabric. All right, so this block would be here. And then you can see that it's here and here and here. So you'd put these together in four patch fashion and then your four patch units you'd put together in your quilt. You'll want to make sure as you're putting this together that each of these fabrics for your four patch are different in order to have it look scrappy like this. And as you are arranging this as well, you do want to make sure so that you have the best option possible that you do a little bit of layout to make sure that you don't have fabrics touching to get the best looking quilt layout. So what do you think? Did that look like fun? This block is super easy to put together. Um, Tammy and I made a couple of these blocks right before we went live today. So it's super quick, super easy. If you like to press your seams open, you can absolutely press your seams open. If you prefer to press them to the dark side, by all means, press them to the dark side. The key. How big are those finished squares? The finished squares measure, so they measure 11 and a half to finish 11. So I wasn't quite sure what the question is, but if you wanted to see, depending on what you were asking, they measure 11 and a half to finish 11. Any other questions? Nope. All right. So now that I showed you a little bit of that fresh as a daisy, do you want to see what a smaller version of this quilt looks like? We did it up as a table topper, and I think you're really going to like it. So, let's see, can we see it all on screen here? Oh, not quite. Almost. So, almost. Let me show you a picture of it. Dun, dun, dun. And you can see here how, oh, isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. So there we use four of our different fabrics and then we brought in the accent of that navy that I showed you in uh, our step out. And then we blended it with a stripe from the Create Joy Project from a different fabric line. And then we used this beautiful dark green as a, uh, the beautiful dark green as the outer border. So this measures, oh my goodness, I, do I have the full measurement of it? It measures, I don't have the measurement here. Huh, let me see, I bet I have a yardstick. It is a 34 inch square, so. really pretty and it goes together really nice. What's the name of the again? It is called, the name of the quilt is called Picnic. It's from the book 12 pack quilts. If you had wanted to make a table topper just like we did, you will need four fabrics for your beautiful blocks and then you will need a third of a yard of your inner border, five eighths of a yard for your outer border, and a third of a yard for the accent, a quarter yard for your background. We'd be able to hook you up with that here in the store or help you out with your selection if you want to make it just like Julie. For your backing for this, uh, you'd want to have a yard and a quarter of it so that we would be a nice 45 inch square so that Angie would be able to quilt it for you. You want to make sure you have more than a yard. Sound good? All right. So leading into Fresh as a Daisy, I think we should look more closely 
at that fabric and I peeked. We do have that fabric right next to me. Wouldn't you know it? Ha! Huh. So I'm going to hand this board off to Tammy. See, we're, we're, we're getting this down so that we don't get swallowed up in all the fabric. And I have here, I don't have the, do we have those bolts, Tammy, of yeah, the, they're right next to me. Okay. So um, I'm just fanning out here this 12 pack here that we had. We do have the 10 inch square, five inch square jelly roll, and then this really amazing panel. So this panel measures 36 by 45. I'm going to open it up so that you can see the scale. You're not gonna see everything behind me. Actually, this is really pretty. I'm going over here. You have to see it. Dun, 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 da, da, dun, da, da, dun. Whee. Okay, so can you see it here? Can you see it all? Most of it, should I back up? Doesn't this look pretty? So I love, it's a 36 by with a fabric panel and it looks really, really great. Since I am out and I escaped, I'm also just gonna quick grab the bolt. They didn't know I was gonna do this, Shh, don't tell them. Um, and there is a really pretty salvage to salvage print. It's not a panel per se, it's yardage. I'm gonna be right back. Dun, 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 You can still hear me even when, so the bolt doesn't do it justice. Here I am. I just wanted you to see that beautiful quilt behind me that we'll talk about a little bit. Okay, so this, look at this fabric. Tammy, did you even see this fabric? Isn't it pretty? So Tammy says it's beautiful. This would be great for landscaping. It'd be great for back. It would be great to cut up. Um, you know, if you got a yard of it and you chopped it up, it could be look like many different fabrics. So I just think it's really, really beautiful. And that is the, um, it is pattern 8493 color 11. So that's super pretty. All right, I'm going back. Dun, dun, dun. Here I am. All right, so we have those available. The other thing that we have with this line are some beautiful squares. So this border or this panel here, we have on the bolt. And you can see here that there is, what I love about this is that you have everything in a repeat at the half yard mark, okay? So what we did is that in your packs here, this last fabric in both the fat eighth and fat quarter size are this square here, which is just beautiful and amazing. So you would receive 16 squares if you have the fat quarter size, and you would get eight squares if you chose the fat eighth size. In the Create Joy Project fabric offerings, we also have, not from this line, but from a previous line, some gorgeous quilt labels that would work really well with any, oops, with any Create Joy Project fabric. I just don't know which way I'm showing it to you. 
Tammy's laughing over there at me. So um, these happen to go a little bit more peachy, but look at like, I love this. This could be great for the back of any quilt, but this label could also just be a nice sentiment on the front of a quilt or on a journal. This one here, one of a kind handmade work of art, I think is my favorite square in all of it. Oh, it's over here too. So I think we have the same thing here that it is at the half yard. So it's a nine, it's a nice quarter inch, quarter yard, quarter yard cut. So often the panels are repeat at uh, the 22 and a half inches. I love that it is cuttable on the nine inch increment. It makes my life very happy. So Create Joy Project Designers, if you're watching, I love that you are making your panels quarter yard divisible. Thank you so very much. I love it. So that is the beautiful Fresh as a Daisy. Now Fresh as a Daisy, we've had in store, it arrived right after our last club presentation. It's been on the, on the shelf, it's sold very, very well. I have uh, a bunch on order as well. So we have some fabrics that are going to be coming in. So that is super great that the fabrics are going to be coming in to be able to look at those and to be able to buy some additional ones. So really great. Okay. Now, oh, what should we talk about? Should we talk about that beautiful quilt that I showed you and teased you with over there? Maybe I should. So let me take a peek and um, we'll talk about that Effie's Woods. Even, so we're gonna skip a section just to look at the Effie's Woods. And then we'll go into our C and Me. So we have this beautiful quilt behind me. And this beautiful quilt is the Effie's Woods that we shared last. There we go. We shared it last, last month uh, where we had some fun projects. And thank you so much. I left without the beautiful book or box here. So you can see this is the box kit. The box kit has everything that you need to make the front and the binding. It has the pattern as well. You can see, I don't know if you can see this, but there is a computer rendered image on the front of the box and on the pattern that doesn't translate perfectly to the real pattern, okay? So the real pattern has a few more of these zigzag points and I just love them. I think that they are super great. I love the detail of this smaller zigzag. Really pretty. Heidi did a fantastic job on this. I know a few of you have made it as well and Mary shared one with our Facebook group, Patchworks Party, really, really well. Goes together, just a little bit of tedious putting all these different points together. We quilted it up with the wood grain and on the back here, I'm going to see. We We're starting to lose the battery. Okay. On here, we have. the panel, the rest of the panel is used for right here. I'm going to quick check on our technical difficulty issue here that we have to make sure that uh, we can be continuing through the rest of our program. But look at these beautiful, beautiful pieces here. Oh, Frank, fix it. Yay, Frank to the rescue. Couldn't do it without him. I probably would have gone dark if I would have been doing it by myself. So thank you, Frank. So, this 
Since I'm standing in front here, I did bring with me from the CME a couple of the panels here. And the panels that I have to share with you, we have a doll panel, and then we have a book panel from Stacy Ishu. So she does really amazing doll panels. And this one here, it is a yard, and it is a 36 by 58 inch panel of fabric. And we have three different make your own mermaid panels. So I love that Stacy has given all of our little baby mermaids undergarments here to wear. And then she's also made these mermaid tails. All of these work with all the other dolls that she's made along the way so that they all play together perfectly. Then we have the See and Me book. And the See and Me book is right here. And you can make this great little activity book. It's a soft book. We don't carry a lot of soft books, but this one is super cute. And I love the little clownfish there. Clownfish, love to, to tell jokes. <laughs> All right. We are going to continue to share with you a few things from right here um, so that right now this is the one camera position we can share with you. So, Tammy, can you still see me? Yes. Great. Do you want me to bring you this stuff? Um, let us, can't really sh sure bring that over. <laughs> bring that over. So, Stacy has a really cool sea sampler quilt that she has created for us and this one here we kitted it up um, I don't have the quilt quite yet to show you but you can see here it is the sea sampler which is finished size 57 by 67 we have everything that you need here to make the quilt and for the quilt top and binding as well as the pattern. Our kit is $129.99. The standalone pattern is $12. We do have 15 gorgeous fabrics from this collection, uh, plus the panels. Our groupings that we have here, I'm not going to fan them out to show you at this instant because I'm standing here and so it might be a little bit challenging to share that with you. So. We have added in to our things that I showed you in the overhead board when I showed you the 12 that we selected. There are some shells here that are backgroundy. Let us look here though, because I wanna show you. So I guess I lied, I gotta show you some stuff. So here, I would say just make sure I'm in camera here. Okay, so we have the mermaid here, and that is really nice. I think it might be hard if you start moving the tripod with that particular tripod. It's not particularly smooth. And then we just have some really beautiful range of fabrics here. Okay, do we have any questions? All right, so for those of you that are watching and love Stacy Ishu, what is your favorite Stacy fabric collection? We just finished up with the Jungle Paradise. I know that we've had some really other great ones and 
actually Stacy's very first fabric line with Moda was Oh goodness, it was I think Coral Queen of the Sea, which was a really fun mermaid. And on that panel, there was just one beautiful mermaid. And so it's really great to see more mermaids come to life. All right, so now what we are going to do is I am going to share with you. <laughs> I'm going to see here what we can do. So we have what I'm going to, so we, I'm just going to grab this. Frank's working on the console. And what we're going to do is, Tammy, can you go to the, can you show us, dun, dun, dun. Oh, you're going to get to see our behind the scenes. So you're going to have to wave, you're going to have to wave, Tammy. Okay, so now, Tammy, can you share with us the Darlings 2 fabrics that we have. So Darlings 2, we've got a little bit of that fabric and we have them on the bolt to share with you. And this particular fabric, <gasps> the snips. So with this, this is a Ruby Star. We have the, um, we have our snips and the gorgeous, gorgeous typewriters. And then there are a few bolts of fabric that we're just going to lay out for you. And just stack them up here. So we don't have many, we just have a couple. We have our pre-cuts still coming. So... They're pandas. Oh, <gasps> these are pandas. Oh, that's super cute. <laughs> so, super fun, super cute. I just remembered here that the binding demonstration that I want to do with you, all I need to do is set up a whiteboard to show you, and then I will have no problem going into our next bit of instruction. So thank you so much for playing along with us. And I, so I want to set this up on a tripod, Frank, so that we don't have to hold it. Dun, 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 dun. thank you so much. <laughs> it's live, folks. Always a party at Patchworks. Come in on us closer. See, this is our high-tech whiteboard. Okay, we gotta come in real close, Frank. All right. Thank you for everyone bearing with us today. I promise it's a good show. We can come at you live again. There we go, all right. So. Does somebody have a joke to tell us? All right, so here we go. So for our binding, and you're not gonna be able to see my face, but that's okay, okay? So what I want to share with you is how we do our, our bindings to be perfect and such. So what I do when I have my quilt, so let's pretend that this beautiful quilt sandwich is quilted and not just a quilt sandwich, okay? So what I do, you know, when you get it back from the quilt or after you quilted it yourself, you have extra fabric on the back and your binding is a little extra and then your quilt top. Well, one of the things that we wanna make sure that we do when we make our binding is that we don't cut it too short. So what I do when I'm squaring up my quilt is that I actually cut it an eighth of an inch from the edge, okay? So you can see here that little dotted line is an eighth of an inch and to the right hand side there, that's the extra that I've cut off. When I get to my corner, so I cut off one side and then I use my ruler to square it up and continue on the other side. So some of you, when you're squaring up your quilt, you might be worried and saying, Julie, I don't have a ruler that's big enough for my whole bed size quilt, what do I do? And I say, don't worry. All you need to do is make sure that you have the ability to have a straight edge that's long enough to be like 12 inches. And then what you would do is use your square on there to, to, um, to work on your other side. And then you just keep moving your ruler as you go up. When you are done, your quilt 
will have just that little peak of batting all the way around it, okay? So this is also uh, a way that if you have, um, need to create a little bit of squaring up on your quilt, you can do that as well, where you can make a little bit of a fudge factor. So with your binding that you have, if I'm making it, I cut it two and a half inch strips and fold it in half. If I use the bias binding on a roll, that's cut at two and a quarter, but the way that it works with the bias is that it ends up stretching a little bit more. So what I do is that I align my binding to the edge of the fabric here. But wait, before I actually do this, I need to make sure that I have created enough binding, okay? So how do I do that? What I wanna do, we're gonna go backwards here and we are going to measure the perimeter of the quilt, okay? So when you're measuring the perimeter of the quilt, you are going to take the length plus the width plus the length plus the width and add a magic 20 inches. Why 20 inches? Because that's what we are going to use for our joins and such, okay? So let's just say that we have a, oh, I don't know, a 40 by 50 inch quilt. So then we are going to have 200 inches of binding that is required. With our 200 inches of binding that is required, you are going to say, how many strips do I need? Okay, so I know we're getting heady and mathy, and so all you need to do is come into the store and we'll let you know. You're going to divide by 40 to come in to see how many different strips that you need. So you are going to need five strips. So five times two and a half is 12 and a half inches, so get 10 yards of fabric. No, um, so a half yard would be great. And so often for, for your binding fabric, I recommend that you get between um, a half and a yard of fabric, depending on what you need, okay? All right, so we did that. And if you were just going to be um, buying it off the roll, you'd take the perimeter and divide it by 36 inches to see what yardage you need. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to start attaching it. So if you are uh, want to be machine finishing it, I apply it to the back side and roll it to the front. If you want to hand finish or you want to machine finish and have the seam on the back, then you would apply it to the front. But what I'm showing you is where you apply it to the back and then roll forward, okay? So you're going to leave a little tail first before you get started, and then we are going to sew this on. And when I sew it, I sew it at 3 eighths of an inch. You can see here that my needle is 3 eighths of an inch. Now, the particular foot that I have on right now, you can't see it, but on the back, I have one of those, um, feed dog things? What do you call that? The, um... A dual feed? A dual feed. That's what I call okay, it. Okay, so, yeah, it. and you could use also your walking foot if you haven't, if you don't have the dual feed. There's another word for it, but... Feed dog. We have the feed dogs on top. So what is that thing called? Dual feed, probably dual feed. I'm just trying to make it more complicated than what it is. So. We're going to sew the quarter or three eighths of an inch, okay? And the whole thing about this, remember we made that extra eighth on the front? That's so that when we are sewing at three eighths of an inch, we're not cutting off our points of our stars. Does that make sense? Okay. So as we near our corner, what I do is I actually veer off and sew into the point, okay? So three eighths, three eighths, three eighths, veer into the point. And then I fold it back, fold it forward, and pin it, okay? Now I'm pinning it, and the reason why I'm pinning it in this weird way is that I'm going to be rotating it 90 degrees to sew the next side. 
Okay, so I'm sewing the next side here and I do start at the end. And you can see the piece of fabric behind us here. And that is uh, so that you can do, I have a little leader on there so that your machine doesn't eat your fabric, okay? And then we're going to continue and repeat. And we're gonna keep sewing. This picture here is to remind us that if at all possible, we want to make sure that we position our joins towards the middle of our sides, if at all possible, as having them bunch up in the corners can add some extra bulk. Sometimes it can't be avoided, but if at all possible, try to guesstimate where your, at least where your first seam intersection is gonna hit. This is what it looks on that front side of the quilt. So you can see you have that quarter inch or, you know, and then a little bit extra here. And so the question is, how are we going to join it to have that perfect, perfect join that Patchworks Quilty staff is always able to achieve? So here I just have, um, I didn't zoom in for you to see this here, but you can see how we have the two tails. Now I encourage you to leave, uh, space in between to be able to join that there. Often I like to leave myself at least 10 inches to join and you can see that my tails are adequate. Now you may have seen that there are a whole bunch of different gadgets that are available to tell you how much this needs to overlap. But I'm gonna let you in on a super, super secret. So you promise you're not gonna tell anybody? The amount of overlap is always equal to the width of the binding strip you have cut. Oh my goodness, I'm going to repeat that again. The amount of overlap is equal to the width of the binding strip you have cut. <gasps> so what does that mean? Okay, so that means I'm going to lay my binding strip down first and then make sure that I have adequate before I strip it down. Okay, so I have this and here you can see I have enough placement. I'm going to test it make sure, oh, yep, I have plenty of fabric. So now I'm gonna peel it back and I am going to snip off that backside, okay? I'm gonna leave my little cheater piece on top and then I'm going to position that over piece, fold it back, snip it, and da da da, it's perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna take out that piece of spacer fabric. And then what we're going to do is that the right side, I'm going to open up and bring it towards me. Okay, do you see how that, I open it up and bring it towards me. And then the left side, I'm going to open it up, but then put the right sides together. And this is the really tricky part that you might have to do this once or twice to not twist it, okay? But you're bringing it towards us. But what we're doing is we're overlapping it so that we can sew a mitered edge. This is super fancy, but I promise you it's not hard. So we are going to take a ruler and we are going to, on that, the left side that we brought down, we're going to line it up and we are going to use our 45 degree um, marker there to be able to align so we can mark a straight line. So I used pen here. You don't want to use pen. I just literally used pen so that you could see it in this photo. Okay. You don't use pen. Don't use black, don't use black ink. Okay. But I drew a straight line and then I positioned it over the fabric. Okay. And then I pinned it, pin, 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 so that it sews together really nice. You're going to sew it but before you cut anything off, because ask me how I know, you want to test, and I don't care if you've done this once or a hundred times, you check it every single time, okay? Once again, ask me how I know. So we've tested it, it totally works. Then what we are going to do is we are going to cut it off and you can just use scissors. If you wanted to use your rotary cutter, you absolutely can. And then you are going to see, da, 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 it works, it's beautiful. And you're going to finish sewing that line along the way. If you were going to hand finish it, I like to start in the middle here. And you can see here on the reverse side, I used a contrasting color of thread here. I did that just so that you could see it, as well as 
the black thread that I used on top of that. You would clearly use matching thread when you're binding, but I just wanted to show you that. So the Wonder Clip here is really amazing because it fits the perfect size of this coming over for your, uh, if you cut your two and a half inch binding, okay? It just hugs it perfectly. So if you wanted to hand finish it, you'd do that. And if you machine finish it, what we're going to do first is we are going to set up our corners. So when we set up our corners, this is a super trick too, is you want your corners to be going in alternating directions, okay? So we're going to turn the one corner and we're going to lay it over, maybe. It's mad that I'm showing you all of these beautiful pictures. Okay, so we have standing by, we are restoring the connection. Okay, so we are going to, there we go. Let's try this again. Okay, so I pin it, and when I pin it, I have this side be the up, I have the, I have them facing in opposite directions. So let's see if we can see it better here. That side and then the other side, okay? I will start when I machine do my binding, when I finish it, I always start in the corner, okay? So you lift up your machine and you position it in. You're gonna be doing a little bit of an edge stitch. Once again, you wanna have it, your feed dogs there and you can see that we're just bringing our fabric over the seam of that we showed there. I put my needle down so that I can get right into that corner. And when I pin, I literally only pin my corners. And then I use a stiletto, or if in a pinch, you can use whatever pointy thing you have, so the back side of your seam ripper. But I recommend a tool that is meant to be used as it because like a seam ripper can end up cutting your fabric. So pay no attention to that photo there. <laughs> and then when we get to the other corner, because remember I said we set up all of our corners, all four corners first, we sew right to that corner, just a stitch past. We have our needle down. We lift up our presser foot. We rotate 90 degrees and then we continue sewing. The, after we sew all the way around, the back side looks like this and with a titch of practice, you can end up having it uh, come closer. I'm not so worried about it being stitched in the ditch on the back side, that's why I put it on the back, but I would absolutely make sure that you use a matching thread versus a contrasting thread, if that makes sense. Okay, so then this is what the front looks like. And once again, I would use a matching thread versus a contrasting thread. You'll want to make sure that you have it set up to work like that, and you can just have all sorts of pretty things. Practice makes perfect and you can absolutely make your own. When you are working with your binding, don't be upset if it takes a time or two to make this all happen. I've done a few hundred quilts and every now and again, I still don't get it perfectly right. And you know, that's okay. So we are just going to, I think we've repowered everything. So I'm just, stepping over so that I can um, connect something here in case if I end up being silent for a second. Are there any questions? I have a couple questions. Oh, we have a couple questions. Okay, so what are our questions? Yes, I will. It, so that is a Oh, I'm sorry. So repeating the question. So Sandy wants to know if we are going to uh, be posting 
a little blog tutorial on that. And yes, absolutely we are. We, uh, we're putting all the things together so that you could do that. And then this is also a dry run. I do want to make a more polished video of just that segment. I just thought that, and so if there are parts of it that you would like to see, uh, please let us know. So Fran wants to know, can we use a decorative stitch? And the answer is yes. And a decorative stitch could be fabulous for using with your, with your uh, piece there. I will stitch out a sample for what that will look like because having that decorative stitch is a different element. And then you don't have to worry about where your stitch lands so much. And it's a great thing because I don't know about you, but you know, we all have these really fancy machines and I never use the decorative stitches, and so I feel like, I'm sorry? So, so, here we go. I couldn't see that. Here we are. So if, so bottom line, written instructions, yes. Um, and then the question is, if you would like to see um, more additional steps, please let us know because we are looking at having this be an educational snippet. We are working to have educational building blocks in addition to our weekly shows so that you can be viewing our educational snippets independent of our live um, things and then as well the educational snippets don't have to worry about if technology is in our favor on any given day right sounds good um, decorative stitching super awesome and the thing about with the threads and the stitches is that it can be a very interesting way to be able to play with different things as you progress okay I feel like I've been babbling. Let us scoop in and take a peek at just some of the other fabric. Do we have a couple other fabric lines that we've been doing? I just have a couple. Okay, sounds good. So we looked at the C and Me. Frank was bringing them over. So we'll just, since we got to see the panels up close. Okay, so this was not one of the packs, but this is a sneak peek at some new fabric that's coming and I just got this in which is super awesome so midnight in the garden sweet fire road we will be getting yardage we have this gorgeous kit this kit finishes 78 83 by 78 and I love the bee the other thing which is like the best part of this like really really awesome you get a bee needle minder Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> you know, you have the everything that you need to make the quilt, but you we need to get this box kit just to get the needle minder. Super cool. All of the ladies are fighting over that needle minder. Okay, so we have the charms layers and jellies these are the pre-cuts that we will be getting so if you were interested in any of the pre-cuts i would highly encourage you, you to get them even though the yardage might not be here for some time um, and hi tammy has a question for me um when adding yes finding, so there's a question of when you add piping how do you do the corners um, that is a PhD level question that since I don't have all the samples to be able to show you in front of me, <laughs> I can't answer you that. Um, if you're doing magic binding, which is that faux piping, you do it exactly the same. I think you would be doing it. I, I don't, I don't have the answer off the top of my head to be able to distinctly answer you. So I will make sure to include more information when we roll out a larger program. So thank you for your question. We question. And we have another question. Very important question. Very important. What is a needle minder? 
<gasps> what is a needle minder? A needle minder is a magnet. So it's a magnetic pin that holds your hand stitching needle to it. So you can wear it and then like if you're sewing, 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 you can just whoosh, flip it on so that you can always be carrying your needle around with you and like stab people. No, <laughs> that's not <laughs> So um, you wouldn't stab people. Um, I'm sorry, this is live. Um, <laughs> but it's really, really cool for, I just wanna make sure to check if anybody was watching. Um, it's a magnet that you can wear and it holds your needle. Um, going back to the Effie's Wood kit, how much is it? So the question is, how much is the Effie's Wood kit? And the so Effie's Wood kit is $89.99. And the size of the quilt is, dun, 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 it is 46 by 59. All right. The only other thing that I was maybe going to show you but didn't is the camellia fabrics. Camellia? Oh. So can you just hand me a, the, if I don't have a tower? I don't have a tower. I don't think we have a tower. All right. So. Let's see if we can look at these gorgeous teacups. Frank is going to show overhead, and then I need to see the canvas and then the wide backs as well. And the wide backs. All right, so we have the really cool teacups here and spoons. And then we have so some uh, complementary colors of the spark. So there's the, we have that here. I just, think it's really cool, these colors here. So what I wanted to show you was the size and scale of the teacups. And I love that there's the little tea bags that are coming out of it as well. We have some canvas. And this canvas is 70% cotton, 30% linen, I believe. Th or It's 70-30. I have it written out on our website as to what the blend is. And this is a really great linen that has a titch of metallic on it. So really, really nice. In addition, we have some nice wide backs that came with this line. We have them hanging in our, in our wide back area and I just wanted to show you scale because you can't appreciate the scale in the in the hanger. So I wanted to show you in our video. You can see these gorgeous big flowers. And this is print, this is uh, one of the wide backs that's on that gorgeous sateen style fabric. As always, some super amazing selvages. I know this is upside down here, but it's beautiful. We have it with the blue and also with this great oh, rust camel color here. It like matches, I'm on trend with my coat, kind of, sort of. We have a few other pieces of spark to share with you that came with the camellia line. I have a medium pink and this rust and here and then a beautiful polka dot i love this polka dot and this metallic here i don't know if you can see it so well 
it's a little bit of a coppery shimmer. So it's really nice. And I just love how the coppery shimmer does go with the gold. So there's gold in the pink here and then the copper, I think it's gold, with the coppery shimmer here, or maybe they're both there. But it's really fresh, on trend, and beautiful. We have some pre-cuts coming, and I know a couple of you have pre-ordered our pre-cut bundles as well. Those are slated first for May, okay? So we haven't forgotten about you, but we're looking at May. So the question is, is the canvas heavier? And yes, let me see if I can somehow share with you the different type of substrate. It's a fancy word, substrate. Okay, so it's a printed linen. And let's look overhead on this. Um, oh, here we go. It even has the blend printed right on the selvage. And that is, oh, it's 80% cotton, 20% linen. So mind, don't mind me, okay? It's a little bit heavier. And you could still use it in a quilt. Or you can use it in a project bag. And this is, like, if we can just look at what the drape is. So if you can kind of see how this is drapey. And this is a little bit heavier. So you don't stiffer, coarser with the linen. You could use this for bags. You could use this in a quilt-type project. You could also use this for garments. Any other questions regarding the fabrics? And this is the same canvas blend that you would have had in the Darlings too for both the typewriters as well as the snips. Okay, Frank, can you plug in my phone? I think I'm losing power. Okay. I'm just losing signal, so. All right. So, last but not least, before we go, um, <laughs> it's always a, it's always fun. Um, we are doing on our second week our block bonanza. So I just want to remind you for that. These are the four blocks that I got started with, and these are blocks one through four are your homework. If you are playing along with us and wanted to keep up, it works really well with the fabric we have in stock, the new Newport that we have, and all sorts of great Americana fabrics. Of course, you can use any fabric that you choose. I highly encourage you to look at your stash or grab a beautiful stack of fabric to get started. I know that Tammy's starting hers with a layer cake and she's gonna be adding to it. So that's gonna be lots of fun. Do we have any other questions before we end tonight? So there is another question of, do we know when the cafe is coming? And right now, my mind is not at any fabric deliveries at the moment, which I know is crazy and hard for you to believe. Uh, so I will look and get back to you to see when our next shipment is coming in. We have lots of fabrics that are coming. We've been ordering lots. So uh, while we might not be sure about the timing, we of course would be delighted to share with you as soon as things come in. We have our Next week, we have our Aurafil Club coming up, and we have that green, beautiful palette to share with you and more botanical themes. On our fifth Thursday, because we have a bonus month this month, we are going to be talking about, well, whatever, the, whatever I want to share with you. And we are working on a fun little springy project for you, so hopefully we'll be able to share that with you. And then in April, we will start back up with our free spirit on the first Thursday of the month. 
So every Thursday, we have something exciting coming at you. If you are a Moda Club member, your materials will be ready first thing tomorrow morning. And we are so happy and thankful that you joined us tonight. If we had some other questions for you that we didn't answer. You didn't talk about the Finders Bundle. Um, so Tammy just asked me about something to share um, that I don't have ready to go. So we are going to um, continue and be, at with, be with you next week. I thank you for tuning in. You have a great rest of your week. Happy quilting, and we will see you soon.